Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to make sure, uh, again, that um, this is somebody who's very important to my life. Uh, Gerald and Brenda Kanak have been faithful. They've been pastors before. One of the greatest attributes of their lives, and I tell many people, whoever I talk about, when I, he, he actually uh, presided over my wife and I's uh, uh, wedding vow renewal uh, 30, 30 years, so five years ago he was there. And, uh, but this is a man and a woman who are faithful. That's hard to find. They've been at their church for over 30 years. One church. I know this, I know this about him, and he didn't know what I was going to say, but the Lord told me to make sure you stay and introduce him. They don't miss prayer. They are there and faithful to their pastors, and they have their lives have been filled. The scripture says that the faithful man shall abound with blessings. And they got many blessings, and not, to, not the least of which is them grandbabies. <laughs> you, stay, you spend more than two seconds around Brenda, she's going to tell you about Gracie and the rest of them. <laughs> Gracie is a handful, a real pistol for the Lord, amen, but in ministry together for over 40 years. An office like that, he stands in the office of the prophet, and I know that his prophetic ministry is well proven. And you might know him because you've known him as some of the places he served. He served in the city of Iowa City for many years, and Marengo, doing various things there, but I find him to be uh, of the highest order in the office of the prophet. Would you welcome, as you stand to your feet, none other than my friend, Prophet Gerald Kanak, as he comes and ministers the word of God to you, amen? And I told him, have your liberty, amen? I might have bummed it. Okay. Got a lot of lights out here. Praise God. Well, I only got about six or seven pages of notes here, so uh, we should get out by the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that long. Would you turn to James, the book of wisdom for the New Testament? Praise God. Walter, if I say anything wrong, let me know, will you? <laughs> The book of James, first chapter. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now I'm going to talk about something that most Christians really don't want to think about. Patience. Does anybody have patience? Good, I see a few hands. Praise God. I'm, I'm going to talk about God's patience and our patience because they are, they are something. The word patience in the, in the Greek is uh, hupom, hupom, Ene, oh, that's hard to say. It speaks of endurance, steadfastness, perseverance. Think about those three words. Steadfastness. Endurance. Perseverance. All those words, the underlying theme of them is a cheerful or hopeful situation. And you wouldn't think that. Well, I got to have patience. You have that cheerful attitude like Pastor Lynette talked about. You need that. All of these words that can be translated as patience, they have that Underlying confidence. Confidence. Not in you, not in me, but in the Lord. That's where the confidence comes. And it's there. It's helps us to remain steadfast and be patient in hope and continuing. It's a continuation. Without that confidence, there could be no hope. 
Without it, there's no hope. Or expectation. Did we hear that just a little bit ago? Hope and expectation. You're hoping for a, a good outcome. Where's that come from? That confidence from the word, from the word, that's where it brings out. Okay? Okay. So without that confidence, you're gonna get stuck. You really will. The confidence keeps us going. You know when you're you're plowing, plowing, plowing in prayer, whatever it may be, and it seems like you're not getting anywhere? This confidence, this perseverance, this steadfastness of prayer, continuing, the continuation of prayer. You're not saying, well, this is it. I'm not praying anymore. What good does that do? You've given up. Okay? It gives you the determination to continue regardless of what the circumstances are. Let me say that again. It gives you the determination, the steadfastness to persevere regardless of what the circumstances are. So you're in need of healing. It's not coming fast enough. It's coming. It's here. You have it. You just have to walk it out. This confidence undergirds and strengthens our resolve. Think about that for a minute. It, patience undergirds faith. Let me say it that way. Patience undergirds faith. It keeps it going. In spite of what things look like, it keeps it going. Okay? And it does because we can have that cheerfulness in the waiting. Cheerfulness in the waiting. That expectation, hope, that's a confidence expectation. So we have that. So we can, we can be cheerful even when things are going the wrong direction. Even when things are looking worse than they were. There's a lot there. Turn to Romans chapter 5. Those of you that have actually heard me speak before, you know I use a lot of scripture. Because that's where we get our faith. Romans 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, be, well, therefore. What's that therefore? Well, just back up a little bit in the fourth chapter, and you'll see a little bit. Uh, this is, of course, about Abram or Abraham, and um, God made him a promise that he'd be the father of many nations. In verse 20 it says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, our offenses, and was raised up again for our justification. Raised up again for our justification. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. The blood of Christ gave us peace because it was for us. By whom also we have access by faith. Make note of that. By, by faith, we have access. Into this grace 
That's the second part, into this grace. And what's the next ver- the, the part here? Where in we stand. Think about those things, people. We stand in his grace. His grace causes us to stand. Because we have faith in Christ. That causes us to stand. And we can rejoice in hope to the glory of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Think about them. Think about them. Then it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Oh, boy, we don't want to go there, do we? How many have had tribulation? Troubles. Hardships. Problems. Whatever it comes your way. Well, James said, count it all joy. Well, I'm not very joyful about that. How many people, how many Christians are, have been taught that God's the one bringing the tribulation? Many in the body of Christ. And that is so far from God. He is not... Hold your place there in Romans just for a second. And I got to go back to James. I better do that right now. James 1, says in verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted... I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Neither tempteth he any man. Oh, that used to just infuriate me when I hear people saying, well, God did this and God did that. They had no clue. No clue. God's not the author of tribulation and trouble. He's the one that delivers you from it. But yet, many in the body of Christ gave him the blame. It never made any sense to me. Why would someone... We'll take a detour. Why would, why would God have to do something like that to get you to do something he wanted you to do? God didn't work that way. He just doesn't work that way. Well, you'll say... He tested Abraham. Genesis 22, 1. Will, let me explain that to you. Abram came from Adam, right? What happened to Adam? He fell. Sin nature came in. That sin nature was passed down to all. God had to deal with, with all of them from Adam on in the flesh to get them to understand what he wanted. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Him and his family were in the ark. Everybody else was destroyed because they wouldn't listen and they were evil. But Noah found grace. Thank God he did. Because he listened to the Lord. And he walked with God. And he did what God commanded him to do. But he had to learn those things in the physical realm. But God can deal with us in the spirit realm. That's how he deals with us. He doesn't have to hit us over the head. Make us sick. Can't do that. He doesn't do that. But people have that idea. And that becomes part of a, of a, uh, a pressure. That's what tribulation is. It's pressure to get you to conform to this world. That's really all it is. When you stop and break it down and make it simple. It's very simple. 
pressure, tribulation, they go together. So let me go back here to Romans. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and we can rejoice in hope. And that's a, that hope is talking about that confidence and anticipation, expectation. Then it says we boast in tribulation, pressure, test trials, painful experiences, hardships. We've, we talked about that. Moffat's translation of that says not only so but we triumph even in our troubles he causes us to triumph even in our troubles so he can't be the author of troubles and then the deliverer too you hear so it says here that tribulation worketh patience Worketh patience is a, is a phrase. It um, deals with working and fully uh, accomplishing, if you will. So it produces endurance, perseverance, and steadfastness. Patience. That's what it is. And patience brings experience. When you begin to be steadfast and, and persevere, no matter what the situation is, you begin to grow in that. You begin to get stronger in it. And the things that used to knock you down don't knock you down again. Because you've developed some spiritual muscle. It's called faith. Patience undergirds faith. Yes. And without faith, we cannot please God. Amen. Right? Amen. So that patience develops the spiritual character that's been tested and proven by adversity. None of us like to go through adversity. No, sir. Yeah. At least I don't. <laughs> but I sure have. Amen. But that that produces that in, uh, endurance. Just like a runner. Uh, you don't go out and run 15 miles in one day if you've never run before. Right. You may have to run a block and walk a block <laughs> until you get built up to that. You know, and that, that's really how it is. You can see I, I haven't run too much. So. Uh, but it's something that it builds muscle memory. Well, it builds your lungs things like that, and you have to have that. So the more that you practice patience, don't pray for it, practice it. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, let's go back to Second Timothy, chapter 1. <laughs> Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse uh, 6. This is... Uh, Apostle Paul giving his, his uh, son in the faith, Timothy, some instructions. Verse 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting out of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yes. Praise God for that. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partaker of of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Paul was telling Timothy, it ain't going to be easy, kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, really? You're going, to have to, you're going to have to struggle with some things. Yes, but you're right. going to have to grow in that. Yeah. And you're going to have to be able to stand up and say, this is the way it is. Because he was a young minister. Amen. You, know, you know that they said that. Yeah. And in verse 12... Here it gives you some reasons. For the which cause I also suffer these things. He was no different. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. Yeah. Know who I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Boy, that's a mouthful. It really is. Hold 
fast the form of sound words. Underline that, mark it, circle it, whatever you do. Which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which is committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost. Keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. So you have the power, the love, the sound mind of the Spirit of God in you. The divine nature of God is in you. That's another reason why God doesn't need to hit you over the head of the ball bat to get you to do something. His nature is in you. If you're born again, His nature is in you. Sin nature is gone. That was gone. That died when you got born again. So you have the ability to be a participant in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're all able ministers of the New Testament. That's what the word says. It's not just for the, you know, the clergy. So we can be participants. And we can be confident. Remember who we're confident in? Not our own selves, but in Christ Jesus. He's our Savior. He's anointed. He's our healer. Whatever it, it is that you need. So you know who and whom you have believed. That is really important. Being fully persuaded and confident that he's able to keep you. And he is. He's able to keep us. So we hold fast to those sound words of the words of the Lord and keep them by the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 12, 1 says that we are surrounded or wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily, easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It's not just all those enlisted in, in Hebrews 11, 1 through 40. The, you know, the, the faith uh, what do you want to call it, hierarchy, the faith uh, notables? Yeah, they're, they're faith notables. But every one of us is a witness also. Right. We are our own witnesses that we have something that no one else has. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. So it says that we, uh, we should lay aside every weight and sins which so easily besets us. Um, one translation says, stripping off every encumbrance, lay aside everything that hinders us in the entanglement of sin. I like that. So it says, let us run. The word run here speaking, speaks of striving to advance or exerting effort, make progress. When you do that, everybody gets together that way. You have multiplication. Of, it's just phenomenal. So you can begin to do things. The building fund, all that just begins to go together with your prayers. and You don't quit. You keep going. You keep believing. And God begins to move things in order. And then all of a sudden it happens and you think, gee, how did we do that? You didn't. Amen. Only you cooperated. Amen. 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 So we are to get ourselves in shape, spirit, soul, and body. And run the race. Get rid of the sin, unbelief, because that will slow you down or stop your progress. Then you can finish what, uh, what you started. Verse 2 of Hebrews 12 says, Looking unto Jesus, we're to run the race with patience and look unto Jesus. 
He's the author and finisher of our faith. One translation I read says the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. I like that. He's the pioneer. That's the author part. He originated it. Our faith came from him. It's a gift to us when we receive him as Lord. So he develops and brings to maturity and perfection our faith. Well, I I thought I had to do all that. You have to cooperate. Yeah, you have to cooperate. I'm just a faith man. No, you're a man who received faith from Christ and you grew and you grew and you grew. Keep growing. You never stop. Never stop learning. Praise God. So we're looking at Jesus, not at the distractions. Anybody ever had distractions? Oh, yeah. Lots of them. The devil has a way of throwing everything at you just to see what sticks. You know that? He'll try anything. And really, he's had many years of practice on everybody in general. Well, that, well, that worked on that one. I'll try it here. Oh, they, they were ready for that. I'll have to go over here. He won't stop. So we can't. We have to keep looking at Jesus. We can't look back at what we were or how we were. We can't look back and say, oh, I'm, I'm just a sinner. You were a sinner. You're saved by grace. Now you're a child of God. So God doesn't need to use the devil to get to you. Oh, glory to God. So why look at Jesus? Verse, verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your minds. Consider him. He endured the cross, it says in verse 2. He endured it, despising the shame of it. And he was able to do that because he knew the end result of his obedience. He knew that he could pick his life up. He laid it down. The father told him he could pick it up again. And they did. So he knew the outcome. He was confident in his father for the outcome. Are you confident in the father for your outcome? Mm. Praise God. He, He knew he was the victor. And he brought forth the victory for you and I. Yes. Mm. Glory. Thank you, Lord. The end result of his obedience was what we experience now. Because it's for all of us. So do not weary and faint in your minds, it says. Galatians says that let us not be weary in well-doing. What is well doing? Doing what the Lord says. Doing what the Word says. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In due season we shall reap. I I like Kenneth Taylor's uh, translation of this, that scripture of Galatians uh, 6, 9. It says, and let, uh, let us not get tired of doing what is right. Let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. Isn't that good? So don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Don't get down. 
Stay up. Stay on top of things. Because you're the head, not the tail. Praise God. So let's, let's go back to James again. You're only a couple pages from it. James 1. <laughs> Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. That word perfect work talks about being complete, whole, full grown or mature. Any of those would fit. Let patience, endurance, perseverance have its perfect work in you. It builds Christian faith. It builds Christian character. So you begin to not be as a child and act like a child, but you put away childish things and you become an adult, a man, a woman, someone who is mature. That you may be, <laughs> you have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire. It just repeats itself in, the, in that sense. The word, uh, the word perfect is full grown, you know. But entire, the Greek word is holochorus. And it, uh, part of the holo means uh, whole or complete, entire. And kleros is by lot. It's like you throw the dice for it. Well, we didn't throw the dice. God chose us Amen. by lot. Amen. That we receive it. So James is saying that endurance, perseverance, steadfastness, patience, however you want to do that, yes. makes an individual mature and complete or whole. Not lacking or wanting anything. You are whole. Pastor Lynette mentioned this scripture. I had to chuckle. Mark 11, 24. She used 22, 25, which is good. But I'm just going to use 24. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's unequivocal. That's absolute. There's no question about it. You believe, you receive, you shall have them. It takes patience, perseverance, sometimes to receive those things. Because it's so easy to give up. Right? Lord told me that today... People had given up on their dreams. How many have given up on their dreams? Put them aside. Because I, I just can't do it. I don't know how to do it. I know it. I know it's here. I know it's here. You shall have what you believe. Look at Luke chapter 8. Familiar verses <clears throat> talking about the Word of God, parable. Verse 11, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. These, those are they by the wayside that hear, then cometh the devil and take away the word that, out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved, or be healed, be delivered. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, so they've heard, receive the word with joy, and these have no root. No root. They're not planted in the word. They're not founded in the word. Which for a while believe, and in time of temptation, testing, trials, fall away. 
That's the majority of the body of Christ. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, again, they've heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, having heard the word, keep it. And bring forth fruit with patience. They heard the word and they keep it. They do the word. Be a doer of the word and not hearers only. So, what I've been talking about is the dynamics of patience. Most people just think, well, I've got I've to quit. I've got to do something. But patience is important. Amen. So decide that God's word is true and hold fast to it. Amen. Decide to act only in faith right. and decide to speak only faith and make a quality decision to release patience to cause us to stand. Ephesians 6, 12 through 18 mm-hmm. talks about the armor of God. And in verse 18, I believe it is, it says that we are to uh, continue to pray. Perseverance is the word I was looking for. Got to get past my Bible here real quick. My Bible's fairly new. I wore so many of them out. I got to had to get a new one. I got to get broke in. That's right, Jack. <laughs> Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So there is it is in a nutshell. The dynamics of patience. We all have it. We just have to work it. 